coming up? We've had a champion at a national show every year for as many years as I can think back. There's not many places I think you can go in America and they're supplying you as much information and you can make educated decisions based upon what you want to do with your program. See how one family's longtime dedication has influenced the evolution of the Hereford breed, next on The American Rancher. Hello and welcome to The American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. Barber Hereford Ranch in Channing, Texas, combines decades of breeding experience with a clear understanding of what their customers demand from Hereford genetics. Over the decades, the Barber family's influence has had a strong impact on the Hereford breed, and they've developed a reputation for producing elite horned and polled Hereford cattle for beef producers throughout the United States. Mom's father started the herd and uh, they had commercial Herefords uh, at the start and then he upgraded them to registered uh, cattle and then when mom and dad took over in the, the 70s, um, they converted it all to a registered herd. Dad grew up on a commercial Hereford herd in, in uh, San Saba, so he's always been uh, used to the commercial cattle industry and, and uh, when he graduated vet school he had to uh, fulfill two years in the military service and after that mom's dad's health uh, had deteriorated so he just comes straight here and, and that's when they took over the herd and, and started Barber Ranch. Well, my mom and dad have been involved with Herefords all their life. That's, you know, all they know really, and that's what their specialty is. And they've just, they've done such a good job of developing our herd and really setting our ranch for success. I know uh, myself and my two brothers and my sister took over the herd and the ranch here a few years back, but it was really nice having the foundation they laid. We're just trying to continue to carry on their legacy. They're actually inducted into the Hereford Hall of Fame here just a few years ago, so you know they've been prominent in the breed and they've built their life off of that. The Hereford breed, as a lot of people knew, was the big hot breed in the United States and it was really styled across everywhere, especially the Texas Panhandle where the XIT headquarters was located at Channing. And back in the day when you went up there, all you saw was red and white faced cattle. Over the years, uh, Angus moved in, they became the popular breed. The Breed Association did a great job marketing back in the 90s and getting certified Angus beef going. And that really helped uh, move more towards black hided cattle. When uh, you saw the country go from red and white cattle to black hided cattle, my family stayed with it. Uh, we've had the ranch there since 1904 and Hereford are what we made our name on. That's what our brand has been and uh, we knew there'd always be a place for them, regardless of, of what wave the popularity went to when we rode the storm. And, you know, really it's paid dividends for us today. Uh, we still have one of the stronger Hereford herds in America. All our commercial customers at some point have used Angus bulls. And so they're looking back for the Herefords to add in the performance. They want the doing ability and the fertility. Uh, they want good feet and they want more muscle. Herfords are still important because they're still great cattle that have a lot of performance. They're sound, they have good feet. Uh, they really cross well with black cattle and other breeds, but uh, I believe there's always gonna be a place for them. I think that it's one of the unique breeds out there because not only can you raise bulls that work in the commercial world, but there's still such a great market for the registered female side of it. Uh, donor cows are worth a lot and the heifer, uh, or the show heifer market is just incredible right now. Mom and dad have always uh strive to produce cattle that look good and still have got the EPDs that uh, people are wanting. I think my family's had a big influence on the Hereford breed. I think our biggest influence, if there ever was one, was uh, back in the 90s when we were a straight horned Hereford herd and we started using a pole bull uh, Remital Keynote 20X out of Canada 
And at the time, it was not popular to cross horned and polled cattle. Uh, we've done that. Now we're a herd that consists of straight horned cattle, straight polled cattle, even homozygous polled cattle. Uh, we've always believed that we want the best cattle possible, regardless of whether they're horned or they're polled. There's still uh, strengths, I believe, from both sides of that. But uh, I believe we've done that with popularity. I think some of the greatest herd sires in the Hereford breed have been born at Barber Ranch. And even today, if you watch auctions and other registered breeders across the country, you see a lot of Barber Ranch genetics there. And we still continue to have some of the most popular herd sires in the breed. Now we've used enough pole genetics that it's crossed really well. Uh, but we still like cattle that have got the big bodied, lots of muscle, super sound, that still got a lot of look and eye appeal about them. That's where I think our bulls really excel in, in terms of the growth and, and the very sound structured and, and really doing ability. And uh, we're constantly trying to improve uh, the eye pigmentation, because that's one thing our customers demand is, is great eye pigment and, and dark red eyes. What we were selecting for is, is a really rugged, uh, high-performing animal. Things that, that a commercial producer and people that are being really progressive in terms of data and measurements are, are focused on. The bottom line with all the data that we've collected and continue to progress in terms of not only genetic, but performance measures are based around the, the Hereford female, um, as well as the Hereford sire, but that Hereford female is so well documented to go in different breeds. We've got such a um, enormous database now collected that allows our customers, no matter what breed they're using these cattle on, uh, just an, a decided advantage in terms of marketing programs. Our bulls are developed uh, out on large traps. Uh, we definitely like to make sure that they get out and they move. We don't like to uh, develop them in small areas. Seems like if, if you don't get them out in a pasture where they can get out and move, uh, it just eliminates a lot of problems down the road. You know, when the first wean, they can be put on feed for a little bit. Um, we've obviously got a, a bull development center there and a grow yard that we can put other cattle there, and it's mainly at weaning, but you know, the Texas Panhandle is so unpredictable. There's definitely times where you've got drought. We had pretty severe drought the first half of this year. Way worse than it was in 2011, and, and but one of the keys of the Hereford breed is they're so adaptable and, and they thrive in this area. We're lucky to have uh, got the, our feedlot going and, and uh, on a total mixed ration. Uh, for everything I feed up there. It, it saves us in hay, and it, it takes less time to feed now. Um, I've g gone from just feeding hay all afternoon to they're fed exactly what they need, and there really isn't any waste, and, and I'm grateful for that. Mom's brother built this feedlot in 81, and uh, it's changed hands several times and we were fortunate enough to purchase it two years ago from uh, the Ford family. And uh, we had fed, we had fed bulls in it prior to that you know, on a, a lease basis, but uh, we had the opportunity to purchase it and it, it's really helped our operations tremendously. Before we had this feedlot, we'd have to develop the bulls at a, at a different feedlot and you, it was hard to maintain the growth and, and uh, we didn't get a hands-on um, like I do now. I get to watch the bulls develop daily. The cows are just on a maintenance diet, but the, the bulls are on a, a grower that uh, we try to um, get three to three and a half pounds of, of gain a day. The grill yard's been instrumental in having an option when the drought really hits, but uh, we don't like to finish the bulls there. We like to uh, get them to a certain point and then kick them back out in a big pasture, in a big trap so they can run out on grass. I'm tickled with the way the bulls are coming on. I think they're right on pace of, of in that three pounds to three and a half pounds a day, and I think they look great. Up next. We've had a, a champion at a national show for every year for as many years as I can think back. Elite, Barber Ranch Genetics perform in the pasture and the show ring. That story is after the break on The American Rancher.
Welcome back to The American Rancher. What Dale and Mary Barber began has devolved into one of the top Hereford Seed Stock Development programs in the nation. And with the third generation beginning to take an active role in the operation, the Barber legacy is in good hands. Justin and I work here on the ranch. Jason obviously works in Fort Worth on Superior, but he has a lot of influence and helps merchandise the cattle. Uh, Terry, who uh, works for uh, Elanco Animal Health, and she's still very involved with, she was president of the American Herbst Association, and right now she is past president of the Texas Herbst Association. So she's very involved in the association side of it. And, and helps with the merchandising of the cattle. Aiden, my youngest daughter, who is a, a, be a sophomore in, in high school, she's very hands-on with the show cattle and, and does a lot of the feeding around here and, and helps work the cattle and, and breaking them, and, and she just loves it. No, my nephew's at Oklahoma State right now. I've told him he's gonna come do an internship with me at Superior Livestock before he graduates, uh, but he said, I mean, he wants to go back home to the ranch. He wants to be an integral part of that, and uh, I know he's got the right mindset and the work ethic to do it, so I know my parents are as happy and looking forward to him coming back as anybody, and I know that that's ultimately gonna be his choice one day, and I believe he's got what it takes to be successful there. Through the years, the Barber family has been active and successful in most national cattle shows in the United States. Probably 78 was the first time that, that they had won uh, Denver. And, uh, oh, we've had a, a champion at a national show for every year for as many years as I can think back. Uh, we got uh, one of our trophy cases over here that represents decades of numerous national champions across the country. Then over here, we have another wall that we got our two carload champions on. Then again, some more national champions over the years from when Jason and Justin, Brett and Terry were showing all the way up to me, Riley, Aiden, and now Beckett and Henley are starting to show. Uh, this one is from the National Western in 2006 would be that Gabrielle Heifer that would be the mother or the grandmother of my Merida Heifer that would have been champion at Junior Nationals last summer at Kansas City Reserve at Louisville. She wins Oklahoma City and she finished out her showing career at Fort Worth. And then we got a Venice right here, uh, Bel Air, Amber. We got all of our Denver champions. Bel Air has a calf over here. Then Anastasia is another matriarch of the Barber Ranch herd and producing show heifers and bulls all across the country that have gone out and been very successful for other operations as well. I recently won the Junior National Herford Expo, the pole female show, with a heifer that we uh, raised out of our genetics. That heifer went on to win Kansas City, reserve at Louisville, win Oklahoma City and Fort Worth. Uh, her mother did the same trio her grandmother also won the same shows as her as well. And actually, my sister Riley showed her grandmother 15 years ago to the day that I uh, won the Junior National Hereford Expo myself. Growing up, uh, Brett and Terry were quite a bit older than Jason and I, and we watched them show. Then when we got old enough, we started showing too, and it just involved what they're doing now, which is washing these cattle every day and messing with them and getting them ready to where they're gentle enough that they can go into you know, show ring and compete. We went to the state Hereford show last month and it was these girls' first year to show. They each won their class with a fall heifer calf, uh, ones that were small enough for them to handle. And um, this one was division champion, this one was reserve division, and then Beck was fortunate enough to be reserve brand overall too. So pretty good, successful trip for the first time. Today, just a little bit of a junior national prep. We leave on Friday for the junior national Hereford Expo today. We're starting to clip heads and clip everything so today we're just going through the motions of washing everything and getting everything blow dried and clipped and ready to go. Junior National String this year consists of a couple bulls but primarily heifers. We got four fall heifers, about six springs and four senior yearlings. Those are our top end show heifer prospects that we pick out when uh, we wean them. Then after that we'll feed them, clip them, get them ready uh, when we halter break them and do all that. And then after that, we'll really kind of mellow them out for a little bit and turn them out and just let them be cows until we get them back in for the summer shows. 
then we'll take some of the summer string to the fall shows, whether it be Kansas City, Louisville, Denver, Oklahoma City, Fort Worth. We won't take near as big of a string there because we'll be marketing some of our sale bulls at those events as well. Uh, this one is a Genesis out of EO88, which is a 5280 out of a cow we call Split, which would be a Sooner Gabriel. And Split would have gone on to win the Junior National Hereford Expo Bread and Own Show for Riley back in 2017. So hopefully this one can follow in our grandmother's footsteps. I've got a twin brother who's got twin girls, and it was their first year to ever show at Junior Nationals. They had reserved Grand Horn to own Heifer, which is a really big honor and really great accomplishment, especially for a first year showman. Uh, but really, I'd say the most meaningful part of it was something that, that's probably a little more rare just for our family because we've been so competitive in the show ring. But to see my nephew Bryden, he won Herdsman of the Year award. Uh, he also won quite a few other awards. I believe uh, the Golden uh, Bull Award, uh, the Joe Lewis Memorial Scholarship Award, but several other prominent awards that takes effort outside of the show ring and takes some interviews and just really being an outstanding junior exhibitor. We've done very, very well with the, with the barbers there. Our first effort, our little girl came in and showed, uh, we showed her at the Tri-State Fair and she was supreme overall at the Tri-State Fair. Went on down to the state show, placed very well, I think reserve division in that, and then went on into uh, the Junior Nationals and placed in the top five in the class at the national level, our first year showing with that. And then every year we've been progressing and getting a lot better and a lot more successful. Last year, my daughter showed uh, a heifer at the Junior National Show. She was also the reserve supreme this year at the Tri-State Fair and went on to the Junior National level and she was a reserve division behind the grand overall and so uh, they are dang sure putting my kids in the spotlight where uh, very very blessed that they are giving us the quality of cattle to show and and giving them a chance to to hit the big ring and with very very good luck really what makes uh, showing cattle so important here at Barber Ranch is it's our best venue to market the cattle when we get these cattle out in the show ring and other people see our genetics and then our genetics are used all over the country I love promoting our good bulls and letting people see it. it they don't have to win, but it's nice to uh, get them out where people can see what you're raising and, and see that they're big, stout, heavy muscled bulls that have, that have got the EPDs and the look that well, there's been a Barber Ranch um, legacy. And we've been really fortunate the last 10 or 20 years to have won quite a bit in the show ring and I think that's helped and spurred on our success and uh, our marketability and bringing in new customers. But uh, showing cattle is definitely a great way to market them but it's also great to have kids that can show in the junior shows. After the break. There's not many places I think you can go in America and there's a wide range of much information and you can make educated decisions based upon what you want to do with your program. Now's the time to get your hands on some of the top Hereford genetics in the country, including bulls out of many of the most popular sires in the Hereford breed. Details after the break here on The American Rancher. Welcome back to The American Rancher. Every November, Barbara Hereford Ranch offers the most up-to-date advancements in Hereford genetics. Their annual auction in Sun Saba, Texas is coming soon. And in that auction, eight bulls sired by Genesis will be offered, along with many bulls with BR prefixes on the top and bottom side of the pedigree. I think it's a great opportunity. Most of all the bulls that have been genomically enhanced, they've all been scanned. There's not many places I think you can go in America and they're supplying you as much information. You know, we get a little bit of everything in our San Saba bulls. So we get guys that are looking for the next herd sire. So registered Hereford bulls to go on registered females. Uh, but a big part of it's commercial guys that are looking for a Hereford bull to go back on their commercial herd. Uh, some of those guys are straight Hereford breeders, but a lot of them either have Brahmin cows or they have Angus cows, and they're just looking for a Hereford bull that comes from us that's got some extra performance growth and muscle to go back on their, their black cows, their Brahmin cows, and they've really had great results breeding uh, not only really good feeder calves, but also uh, making really great replacement females. We've sold cattle into Canada, Mexico, uh, from California out to Maine. Um, so they go everywhere. Our, probably the most new customers last year was Arkansas. Down in South Texas, majority of those um, commercial herds are gonna go on, on Tiger Stripes. 
I'm feeding about 120 right now, um, and, and we'll cull that down to 110. And uh, there'll be everything from Cavanese uh, to the really high growth, big stout ones. I don't think any of them will be over a, a, a five on birth weight. And uh, our customers are, are really striving to have moderate birth weights and they want to push the weaning and yearling weights as uh, high as you can get them and not uh, uh, jeopardize any birth issues. We've collected all the ultrasound data on uh, the bulls for this fall. Um, it looks outstanding. I know it, it's been really uh, dry, but uh, we, we're trying to identify the superior um, sires based on, on carcass as well as, as growth and feed efficiency. Well, my family sale in San Saab is always that second Wednesday in November. We typically get the cattle there on Monday, so they're ready for viewing, so about a day ahead of time. Uh, we normally have a big dinner there Tuesday night, and anybody that wants to come join us is welcome to do that. If they want to see the cattle before that, they're uh, running out in big lots at the ranch, so people can come up there and go see them uh, running out on grass and uh, you know really watch how they move and, and ask us questions. You can definitely have more one-on-one -on -one time with us, it seems like, if you can make it to the ranch. Join the Barber family for the 2022 Barber Ranch Bull Sale on Wednesday, November 9th in San Saba, Texas. For details, log on to BarberRanch.com or SuperiorLivestock.com. And as always, the Barber Ranch Bull Sale will be broadcast on Superior. That's all the time we have today. To find out more about us, visit our website, TheAmericanRancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick. For our entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.